This video is going to be no frills, low production quality. Um, I'm just going to briefly show you how to obtain, process, and quickly analyze um, discharge data from the USGS website. <laughs> so first of all, um, you see in this window on the left here, I've got the www.usgs.gov slash water website open. Um, USGS is the United States Geological Survey and they collect and serve most of the surface water data in the United States. Alright, now they've got some interesting content up here at the top but what I want to draw your attention to is the current stream flow conditions map here in the of the United States and I'm just going to select Missouri from the drop down and it should take me to that site. Let's see. You may have to go back, click Missouri. Conditions for Missouri. Okay, so this is current conditions for Missouri stream flow, flow 268 sites found. I'm going to scroll down. And the site that we want to focus on is the James River at Galena, Missouri. So this one, James River at Galena, Missouri, it's under the Mississippi River Basin, White River Basin, and um, the number for this station is 07052500. We can just click on that hyperlink. And it takes us to this page, and it will give us uh, several choices we can make here. Right now, we can see what the current um, gauge height and feet is for this site. Um, the most recent data points from 12:15 on February 22nd, which is the day I'm recording this. Um, you can see the past few days in the graph here. Um, here's the discharge over these past few days. I uh, can see the current. Um, <laughs> the current discharge is um, 373 cubic feet per second, just below 400 on the graph here. And um, you can even see how that relates between the maximum, which was in 1945, and the minimum in 1964. I'm going to scroll back up. Remember, if I go fast here, it's just to keep this video short. You can always pause and rewind a little bit to find um, the steps if you miss them. All right, from this drop down under provisional, provisional data subject to revision, there's a drop down. And I want to search for um, surface water peak stream flow. I want the peak stream flow values because that's what we use to calculate recurrence intervals. So surface water peak stream flow for Missouri, USGS James River, at Galena, Missouri, um, surface water peak stream flow. So everything looks good here. And what I'm going to ask it for under output formats is a tab separated file. You can see a scatter plot graph of annual peak stream flow in years, and, and you can see the data. Um, we want to get that in the tab separated file. I'm going to click on that, and it opens up um, this page. Now, this looks, conf this looks um, hard to decipher and difficult to interpret and all of that, but this is the way a lot of scientific data is served off the internet. And what's key here is this top part portion of the data that has the number signs before it is the header information. And you can't ignore this if you want to decipher what this stuff means. What it tells us is um, what these codes mean. So, Agency underscore CD, that stands for agency code. Site number, USGS station number. Um, peak underscore VA, or peak value, that's annual peak stream flow value in CFS. So this is telling us what those codes mean, what units they're being reported in, and so forth. Um, it says here the sites in this file includes the James River at Galena. And then here are some more codes. These won't be too important to us today. Now, to get the actual data, what I need to do is just 
highlight, I'm just using my mouse and highlighting the data, selecting it all the way to the bottom. Um, I'm going to copy that data, right click and copy, or you could uh, Command C or Control C on a PC. Then I've got an Excel workbook open here, just a blank workbook. I'm going to click in the uppermost cell and I'm going to paste those values in. You can see they come from over here over to this side and they've been pasted into columns and rows. Um, you'll notice that several of the columns are largely unpopulated. We don't need them. Gauge height, year last, something, um, these. So I just highlighted them. I'm going to right click and clear the contents from there just to get rid of stuff we don't need. I actually tried to figure out, and I can't figure out what this row is when I was um, practicing before I made the video. Uh, we don't need it. We can just right click on the actual row heading. So I'm right clicking on the two because this is the second row. I'm just going to delete that and it gets rid of it. All right. <clears throat> now, what we're left with is the agency code, which is USGS. That means they collected it. The site number, which is the 07, uh, Excel truncated our, our leading zero off of here, but 07052500. Um, that's going to be the same because we've only got the one site. It is possible to download multiple sites in one data set. Um, we just chose this one, so that's all we have right now. So they're all going to be the same. So we really don't need those two columns. They're not telling us anything, but I'm just going to leave them there. Um, peak TM, if we look, peak TM is time of peak stream flow, 24-hour format. Um, those are only recorded for the last most recent years and not even all of those. I'm going to highlight that column. We don't need this data. Um, so I highlight, I clicked on the D, highlight the column, and I'm just going to clear the contents. That sets everything to a blank there. Now the next thing we need to do, I'm going to click on uh, column E. You could also click on column D. It doesn't matter. Right click on that column header and put insert so that I have two columns side by side. And now, to plot these data correctly, we have to translate what's going on in here a little bit. First of all, this is peak DT. Peak DT is the data peak stream flow. So um, if I make these data a little larger, you can see that for this first one, it was April 1st, 1922. Um, what we want out of that is the year because that's what we're going to plot. We don't actually care which day of the year or month of the year it occurred in, at least not now. We are going to, in a second, have to deal with that. But for now, I just want to get the year. Um, you could just go down through here and type 1922, uh, 1923, and so forth, but that would take you a while. There's a faster way to do it, and it's to create a formula in this cell. So equals is um, the way that you start a formula in Excel. There's a function called year, so Y-E-A-R, and then a parenthesis. And then if I click on the date that I want to extract the year from, um, it puts the C2 in there because that's the cell, cell C2. And I close that parenthesis, and it extracts just the year from that date. Now, it is possible that when you do that, pay attention here because this will really confuse you. When you first write that formula, it's possible that you do the formula correctly, equals year, um, parentheses, C2, close parentheses. You hit enter on that, and you get something that looks like 4 slash 5 slash 05, which looks completely wrong. The problem there is, is it's formatting things as a date, but this should be a year. So the easiest thing is to come up here from the drop down and choose number or right click on that cell, click format cells, and in there choose number. Um, since I'm in here, I'm going to decrease the decimal places to zero, and now we've got our year out of there. Um, if you're not familiar with Excel, we can propagate this formula all the way down the list. This bottom right hand corner, there's a little square here. There's a square green, a green square that outlines this cell because it's the one that's active right now. But there's a little square in the corner. If I double click that square, 
it propagates that formula down the whole list. You can see this one, it's pulled 2015 out and so forth. All right, now look closely at the data and what you'll notice is 1924 had two peak flows, July 12th and December 19th. This will not be, um, <coughs> the 2015 data um, are not complete yet. You actually see that there was a peak in June 20th, 2015 um, once we get to the end of 2016, we may find that this list, the new, the next peak in here is in December 2015 from when we had the big floods and big rainfalls back in December. Um, what's happening here is the USGS considers a water year to run from October 1st to the following September 30th. If you Google that, and I think I Googled USGS water year, and the first choice that comes up is the US defi USGS definition of what is a water year. And it says that <clears throat> the US Geological Survey water year um, is defined as the 12th month period, October 1st for any given year through September 30th of the following year. So the reason we have two separate peaks over here in July and December is because they're in the same calendar year but in different water years. The water year goes from the 1924 water year would go from uh, excuse me October 1st 1923 through September 30th 1924 and so this July 12th reading was the biggest flow during that time period on October 1st 1924 we actually started the 1925 water year the water year is named for the year in which it ends not begins so it begins on October, 21st, October 1st, 1924, and would have ended on September 30th, 1925. So this is actually, um, this peak flow on December 19th, 1924, is actually the peak flow for the 1925 water year. Now we can write a simple formula to straighten all this out for us. Um, and once again, we use the equal sign to start a formula. And we can use an if statement. And an if statement is just a logical test. You can give it a test. In this case, what we want is to say if the month for this date, so that's the month C2, and then if that month is less than or equal than 9, so in other words, because the water year goes through September 30th, if the month if the number for the month from that date is less than 9, then something's going to happen. And what we want to happen is, well, if it's less than 9, it happened before September 30th. It's going to be in the 19, in this case, 22 water year. So I'm going to click D2 here. That'll be our choice. If it's not less than 9, if the date is October, November, or December, so 10, 11, or 12, then it's in the following water year. And what we can do is take the year in this column and add one to it. So plus one. So I'll leave that formula active for a second. It's if open parentheses month parentheses C2 close parentheses equal to or less than nine comma then what we want to do is just put whatever is in cell D2 and if it's not less than nine in other words if it's greater than nine so 10 11 or 12 we're going to take the year and add one to correct the water year out. Um, it's just asking me here, I, I should have put one more parentheses here. I had two sets of parentheses to close, I think. Uh, I'm not sure what the mistake was, but it corrected it. Okay, now I propagate that formula again by double clicking in the bottom right hand corner. And what you see now is um, these two 1924 values have corrected. One was for the 1924 and 1925 water year. So I'm just going to make this column called water year. Um, and if it would help you be less confused, this is calendar year. Alright, now we've got our data processed. It's not unusual when you get data off the internet, lots of scientific data served this way. You've got to do a little bit of processing and of it to get it in a form you can use. All right. Now we have water year and the peak discharge. So I'm just going to rename this column um, peak Q. Q is the 
variable for discharge. And that's what we can make a graph of now. Um, if we wanted to, we could graph those and get a scatter plot for the maximum flow for each of the water years in the record. Um, before we do that, if you recall um, our recurrence interval exercise, which I'll just open for a second, um, that we looked at in class, recurrence interval is n plus 1, where n is the number of years of record, divided by m, which is the rank. Okay, I'm going to move this off the screen. Actually, I can put it over here and it will be out of the way for us where we can see it. Um, this is for the root river. What I'm interested in here is the formula. Um, so the first thing we need to do is rearrange our data. Um, so I'm going to select all of our data. I'm not going to worry about um, these columns out here. We could just clear those out. We're not going to use that data. Okay, so I'm going to highlight all of our data, including the header row up there at the top that's got the column labels. And then I'm going to choose the data menu and sort. There's a few ways. You can go through the data menu in the toolbar for Excel up here. Um, or you can come this way, and then there's uh, shortcut keys in both Mac and PC that will get you here. But you want to sort the data. And I'm going to click not the quick sorts, but the custom sort button, which is the bigger one. And it gives me um, this dialog, and what I can tell it is I want to sort it by water year. And that should be all I need. Um, and I can sort them from smallest year to largest year. Uh, that should be all I need because each water year should be unique. And I hit OK. And, oops, what was I thinking? I don't want to sort by water year. I want to sort by peak Q from largest to smallest. So I want the largest flood at the top of the list and the smallest at the bottom. So my column should be peak discharge. Now what you see is we've got 2008 came up to the top because it was 85,000. 100 cubic feet per second. The 1993 was the second. Um, 2011 was the third. And if we scroll all the way down, 1934 was our minimum peak discharge year. Okay, now we can do the ranking. And this is easy, just one, two, three. You don't have to type all those down. Once you get the pattern started, Excel will recognize it. So type one, two, and three. Highlight all three of those cells, and then double-click that magic square in the bottom right corner, and it's given us our rank for all of those. Now, and you can see that our N is 94 years. We have 94 years in the record. <coughs> and then we can calculate our recurrence interval. Um, the recurrence interval, once again, is N plus 1 divided by M. So we can write a quick formula. R equals N, and N, remember, is 94. So 94 plus 1, N plus 1, divided by the, the rank of the current record that we're interested in, so this one. So that makes this a 95-year recurrence interval. And then if we double click, we just calculated all the other recurrence intervals. And we can clean up the decimals using this little button that's got a blue arrow um, pointing to the right with different numbers of zeros. And you might have to click both the buttons back and forth to get it to where you want. Um, and now we've got our recurrence intervals. All right, that's, that should give you everything you need to finish up the assignment and create a graph and do the forecasting. <coughs> um, once again, if you missed anything or I went fast, you can always pause, rewind, or uh, ask me at office hour or send me an email. All right, good luck. Thank you. Bye.